This is Swinton's uh, war memorial for the Great War of 1914 to 1918, which began with the shooting of Franz Ferdinand um, exactly 100 years ago. And it uh, led to the deaths of tens of millions of people. And that's what happens, ladies and gentlemen, when men and women follow orders, when they do as they are told, when they get a fevered patriotism and believe that conscientious objectors and pacifists are cowards and they go around shaming. And uh, there was a story about World War I, or was it World War II? It doesn't matter. These are big, obedient uh, industrial death machines. But there's a story that um, women would refuse to have relations or court or date pacifists or men who saw through the illusion. For seeing through the illusion, you're thrown in jail. And the British government, the good old great British libertarian, freedom-loving, democratic, they, um, they stopped at actually executing conscientious objectors because that was a step the British establishment was not prepared to take at the time, which is to murder men for sticking to what they believe in. Can you imagine that? Anyway, they didn't murder them, they just threw them in jail so they could get raped by other people, you know, and die, their spirit can die. Anyway, I want to talk about, let me turn this around, I want to talk about how the advances of science have resurrected God. Nietzsche said God was dead, the 18th century, 19th century, 20th century, all the advancements in philosophy and science have been trying to kill God. And you see the kind of forefront of militant atheism, which I have big respect for. They attack organized religion, they attack the kind of what they call woo-woo, kind of superstitious man in the sky, man listening to your sins. Um, well, not man so much, but abstract idea of man. The thing which we're created in the image of God, you know, but anyway. Quantum mechanics and quantum physics have resurrected God. They have resurrected the idea of magic. They have resurrected, mathematically, factually, and proven the concept of magic, multiple dimensions, infinite possibility. I'll give you an example. I want you guys to look up the idea of probability amplitude within quantum mechanics. Basically, if I can cut a long story short, <laughs> I'll give you my interpretation first of all. We exist in the mind of God. This is why you cannot prove God, you cannot see God, you cannot do anything except experience it. Because if we are in the mind of something, if we are literally the imagination of a massive consciousness, there's no way you're going to prove that. I mean, this is a level of reality that you do not have access to. And we look into deep space with our Hubbles and our electro scanning red shift pattern detecting megascopes, not micro, megascopes, telescopes, telescopes. And you see dark matter, things which are there, but they exist in another dimension. What the hell's that? It's the mind of God. Anyway, existing in the mind of God, what scientists have found, and this is from Richard Feynman, going back to Bohr, going back to the men who argued and defeated Einsteinian theory, they defeated relativity by proving to Einstein that the moon is actually not there when you're not looking at it. It exists as a very probable amplified idea that is actually there when you perceive it. Quantum probability amplitude. Okay, let's get to the point. Nothing is actually there. There is absolute nothingness. There is just possibility. There is a soup of possibility. But there are ranking probabilities of things which are probably going to be there because enough perception has gone there or because, you know, enough people have noticed that this blade of grass was here five minutes ago. The probability amplitude of that blade of grass being there when I turn the camera again is very, very, very close to 100%. And here's the crazy thing. Let me try and explain this. There is a very tiny chance that I can turn the camera to that blade of grass and it will be Brad Pitt. I shit you not. In the mind of the universe, every possibility exists simultaneously with differing probabilities. I mean, I, many of you are going, what the f, f u c k? I can't swear, my baby's here demolishing my wallet. Look at that, look at my pieces of paper all over the floor. And there's some uh, naughty eggs for the little brats. Anyway, what are you doing to my wallet? 
Yeah, he knows. He knows where the power is, don't you? <laughs> anyway, we exist in the mind of the universe or God, whichever you prefer. Everything that can possibly be imagined is being imagined in the infinite scale of the totality. The totality being a very powerful word to describe everything that could possibly ever be. But what does this mean for human beings? It means that, let me just gather my thoughts here. I mean, look, we can only speak from experience and many of us have very little experience in certain things. What do I have experience in? I have experience in conflict, in dealing with authority, in um, standing your ground when people try and tell you what to do. That is where my experience lies. My experience lies in also sharing concepts, sharing ideas, and also for the last 19 months being a full-time father, which is the greatest thing I've ever done. The well, the greatest thing that's ever happened to me. <laughs> my son is way closer to the infinite potential of the universe because he's only one. He was there very recently. He was part of the nothingness before he became an imagined, well, self-contained little bundle of consciousness himself. Hey, Leo. Good boy. But all you can do... Okay, what I'm trying to say is, is that, like, the material world, the things around you, this wallet that the baby is playing with, these are merely kind of symbols like, like these these are the kind of pinpricks on the map and many people oh look at that there's some police cars up there I mean come on it wouldn't be a Charlie Veach video if we didn't film some police cars very briefly there you go dominoes and two police cars welcome to the matrix anyway everything including that blade of grass that I was filming these are signposts of reality they are not reality itself do not confuse the map the map, even my face, even the photons shining from the big ball of light up there onto my face, into the camera, onto the processor, kept as some sort of AVCHD kind of um, data and then it's transferred onto YouTube and you see that the baby's littering everywhere. But anyway, do not confuse the material world for reality. Reality are the emotions, reality is the willpower. Willpower is magic, so said Alistair Crowley. Inner emotion, inner passion, true passion is what richness is. It's not a Porsche. It's not having really expensive clothes. It's not living in a big house. You know, you try and base relationships on money and power. You, you know, you attract a gold digger, or if you're a rich woman, you attract a gold digging man. Those relationships are not gonna last because they lack that emotional, mm, that make life interesting, that make life worth anything. Huh. I'm like, yeah, I'm proud to be poor. I'm proud to be financially poor because I'm spiritually very rich. I'm extremely rich spiritually and I'm so grateful for that. I'm grateful to the universe. I'm grateful to the viewers. I'm grateful to my son. I'm grateful to my partner, Stacy. Grateful for so many things. But love, that thing which makes your eyes well up with tears. And love can come in a million different infinite ways. You know, like when I think about you know, to give you an example, in the, the film Saving Private Ryan, which came from a true story, that um, lady who worked in the telegram office that was sending letters to Mrs. Ryan, and then she noticed it was going to be the fifth letter sent to Mrs. Ryan. She's lost all her children, all five children, dedicated obediently to the great wars in Germany. They're dying on the battlefield. And something was awakened in the heart of that lady, and then she went to the commanding officer and said, look, got to do something here and amidst all the insanity of war when people can go hold on a second like we can't this woman's given four of her children we can't take the fifth one for this bullshit the universe will hack the reality and the biggest sacrifice will be made to honor love to honor what it means to be human and that is not throwing children's lives to the devil on the battlefields of Europe. And now, you've got Vladimir Putin, very, very good, 
invading eastern Ukraine after having taken over Crimea. He's probably going to go after Estonia, Lithuania, Latvia, maybe even take Romania. Fuck it, take Norway and Finland and Sweden. And I, I beg the world, I beg the universe that this is not the start of World War III. I think we can change things without a thermonuclear confrontation. But history repeats. And so, in case this video seems like a kind of sunshine riddled ode to nothingness, let me just say, love and the fight for love are the only thing which will give your life meaning. Everything else is pure bullshit and you just get lost in the infinite potentiality of the amplitude field and you'll be chasing things, you'll be chasing shadows because that out there doesn't exist. Your job, your money, you know, your, your clothes, your kind of Giorgio Armani suits, your makeup, your perfume, doing your hair, you know, they, it, it's all fades because it's all imagination. If you want to actually connect directly to the soul of God, the resurrected God, then just love someone. Just love them purely and help them without any compulsion, no compulsion on them, no compulsion on you. Love is beauty, love is freedom, love is truth.